Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Becker. I'm an ear, nose, and throat doctor. A sinus infection is like a cold that lasts a long time. A cold is a viral infection, but if you get a bacterial infection, that won't go away by itself. And so you need to see a doctor uh, to get that treated. Sinus pain is like a throbbing pain, really. It just hurts in your sinuses. The best way to put it is when you see a commercial on TV that shows the throbbing sinuses, that's what sinus pain feels like. Recovery after sinus surgery is generally uneventful. We've been tracking pain after surgery uh, in our practice, and it turns out that one third of our patients take no narcotic pain pills, 70% take fewer than five pain pills, and 90% take fewer than 10. Uh, there is some discomfort. Um, I think it's a little bit like a sinus headache that people might have, but usually uh, it's something that extra strength Tylenol or maybe one or two pain pills in the early stages of the recovery would be the most that people need generally. A cold is contagious, but a bacterial sinus infection is generally not contagious. You don't want to be around someone who's immune compromised, who's getting chemotherapy, or has other sort of immune problem. But generally, if you have a bacterial sinus infection, uh, you can be out in public. That's different from when you have a cold. Uh, there are a lot of different symptoms that people can have with sinus problems, but not everyone realizes that your eyes can be affected too. The tear ducts drain into the sinuses, and so if the sinuses uh, are blocked, that also blocks the tear ducts. And so some patients report tearing, some people report eye pain, things of that nature. So uh, there can be some eye symptoms that are related to the sinuses. Sinus polyps are growths inside the nose and sinuses. Uh, anyone knows who's ever had a colonoscopy that sometimes uh, the doctor removes a polyp. And a lot of times they're benign, but sometimes they're not. And it's the same with the sinuses. Sinus polyps are generally inflammatory growths uh, that are we treat in a number of ways. We often start with medicine, uh, we look at allergies, uh, and if necessary, surgery is involved. But if we don't know what they are, uh, that's a reason to have some surgery and get a pathologic diagnosis. Sinusitis can cause a lot of different symptoms. It can cause nasal blockage, nasal drainage, recurring sinus infections, sinus pain, and a lot of others. The way we treat that is when we see you, we want to find out uh, what symptoms you have, how your sinuses are bothering you. We'll do an examination. Usually we'll put a little telescope inside your nose to really get a good look. Um, then we would uh, design a treatment plan. That treatment includes medicine first. We want to think about allergies and possibly evaluate you for allergies, and we want to see how those things do. When medicine fails and when allergy treatment fails, then we have a third option. We can look towards surgery. Unless there's something dangerous going on, like a growth, then we would only really do surgery when uh, your sinuses are bothering you so much that you feel like something needs to be done. And so when medical therapy has failed, sinus surgery is a pretty good option. Sinuses can cause problems in your ears. When your sinuses are full, uh, then that can cause a blockage of the drainage tube of the ear. And that can cause ear fullness, hearing loss, fluid in the ear, and even ear pain. In those cases, we try to treat the sinuses, and that's a way of fixing the ear. Uh, all the usual treatments of the sinuses, starting with medical treatment and allergy treatment, are how we go about it. And what we find is in those cases, if we fix the sinuses, we'll fix the ear. Most everyone's heard about a deviated septum, but not everybody knows what it is. The septum is just a wall that divides your nose into a right and a left. And of course, in the back, it ends, and so it's connected in the back. If that septum, if that wall is straight, then it won't obstruct your breathing. But if it bends to the left and then bends to the right, it can block your breathing on both sides. And so when you have that problem, that's a carpentry issue, if you will. Uh, we often will start off by giving patients medications to try, uh, but that doesn't fix the structural issue. And so if you have nasal blockage that does not respond to some simple treatments, and if you have a significantly deviated septum, the good news is that straightening the septum, that's called a septoplasty, can really help. A septoplasty is an operation to straighten a deviated septum. Usually, a small incision is made on the inside of the nose so no one can see it, and that allows uh, the surgeon to lift the lining 
uh, off of the cartilage and bone of the septum. That cartilage and bone is thin. It's thinner than a popsicle stick. And once we can see that, then we can remove, reposition, and sculpt that cartilage and thin bone to make it straight. We then allow the lining, the drapery, to fall back down. We quilt it back together and sew up the incision. Uh, it's a fairly brief operation, generally not painful. There's no black and blue. In our practice, there's no packing in your nose. It's really, uh, if you have nasal blockage, it's not a bad way to go. Recovery after septoplasty is generally uneventful. Most people are stuffy for the first week, maybe two, uh, but then once that's passed, people generally find that they're breathing much better than before surgery. When you have a nasal fracture, you need to be seen fairly soon to make sure there aren't any emergencies. Sometimes there can be problems that you need to fix right away, and so you do need to be seen. Uh, once those uh, problems have been eliminated, then you have a little bit more time to think about what to do. There are two reasons, in my view, why you would fix a broken nose. One is because your breathing is worse than uh, before the injury, and you don't like it. You want your old breathing back. And the other reason is that your nose looks different. It's twisted to the side, and you don't like it, that you want the old nose back. If it's a minor change, then you might not need to have surgery, but if it's more significant, uh, then you can proceed. We have a large practice here at Becker ENT, and we're still growing, and it's really a great privilege to take care of all of our many patients. We try to give a lot of information on this website, but if you have any other questions or you feel you need to be seen, uh, we'd love to see you.